Switched power. What is it? Why do we want it? How do we get it? TMW is here to help. Intro. So what is switched power? If you're looking at putting electrical accessories on your bike, like a cell phone charger or a chain oiler, GPS, something like that, you've probably heard somebody tell you that you ought to put it on switched power. What does that mean? Well, quite simply, what that means is that the device, or the power source for the device, only comes on when the bike's ignition is on. We want this, I mean, obviously and simply, because otherwise you run the risk of discharging your battery. So that's what it is and why we want it. Now, how do you get it? Well, there's a few different ways, and full disclaimer here, I'm not an electrician. I don't know how this stuff works, I just know how to put it together so that it does. If I put it together and it didn't work, I'd have to call somebody to figure out why. But I know how to put these things together and I'll show you how. So we're gonna start with the 12 volt relay. So 12 volt relay is this guy right here. This is a 12 volt relay. It's two different parts, you can see. So it comes apart like this. This is the actual relay. This is the wire leads here. And you can see the little wiring diagram on this side of this. So it plugs into the leads. And then of course this particular model has got a bolt hole on it that you can attach it somewhere for whatever application you're using it for. Um, I like it just because with the flange, I can just tuck it underneath this piece right here and it stays put. My concourse has got this real handy cover that sits right here. Uh, you can see my whole cockpit's taken apart right now. There's supposed to be a cover here and a cover here, and of course the windshield, and then the big plate here that'll hide all of my electrical. We'll talk about that. So this is the relay. And I'll link to this relay on Amazon's site. Um, I do want to say that we're not endorsing any of these products and they're not sponsoring us, anything like that. I just want to try to save you the trouble of having to find the component that you want. If you get the stuff that I have and put it together the way that I show you, it will work the way that I show you how to do it. So that's why we're just going to link to the stuff that I have. There's all kinds of other products that would work, but I'll show you what we're using. So what the relay does, it's a switch. It's like a light switch, except instead of having a little lever to turn up and down, a switch like that, a relay uses another electrical circuit as the switch. So the idea is that you attach the switch of the relay to some other circuit that's already on switched power on your bike. Uh, the best to use, or, or not best, but uh, the, one of the most common ones to use is the license plate elimination lamp. And that's real easy because it's a non-critical circuit. If you have some problem and it fails, whatever, it's not a very, very critical component of the bike, it's easy to fix. One of the advantages to having a touring or a adventure type of bike is that usually the manufacturer has provided you with a switched circuit already. So underneath this accessory boot, these two wires right here, this is a power and a ground wire for an accessory circuit. This power only comes on when the bike is turned on. So I have used those to run the switch on my relay. See these two wires here come into the relay. So, when this circuit energizes, it activates the relay. It completes the circuit between those two wires when the smaller circuit engages. And then these two wires here, one of them goes directly to your battery, positive terminal on your battery, and the other one, well, I'll show you where that goes in a minute. So now we have our relay, our switch circuit, energizes the relay, sends power to another component. So, Depending on your application, that might be all you need. If you're only ever going to attach one accessory to your bike, you could just attach the power wire from your relay to whatever device you were going to energize, and you'd be done. It'll turn on when the key turns on, because that's what the relay does. Um, most of us are probably looking at attaching more than one component to our bike, and also you really want fuse protection. That right there. That is our auxiliary fuse box. It's got a cover on it. We'll pop that off. So we have a negative terminal, a positive terminal. This is a negative bus, we'll talk about, or a ground bus. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we've got six circuits here that we can use with fuses. 
And this particular block has also got fault indicator lights. So if you have a short somewhere, one of these lights will turn on next to that fuse and show you which one it is. Our power wire coming off of our relay is going to attach here to the positive terminal on this fuse block. Then I'm going to attach another wire from the negative post all the way back to the negative terminal on the battery. It's actually this little guy right here. Ignition turns on, accessory circuit goes live, switches the relay, sends power from the battery, which is going to be this cord right here, sends power from there up to the positive post on the circuit. Then the ground goes back to the battery and everything in here gets connected. Now this has got the negative bus or the ground bus. And what that is, is a common ground point for all the accessories that you're going to attach to this, all the wires. So power wire goes here, ground wire goes here, power wire goes here, ground wire goes here, and so on. Now what that does is it gives you a common ground. Gone are the days when you could just pick any bolt that looked like metal attached to metal and assume that it was going to be a good ground. Uh, bikes have got composite frames now. Not the entire frame is uh, conductive material. Uh, rubber bushings and plastic fasteners and all kinds of things can make it so that just any metal bolt is not necessarily a good ground. So you want to have a solid ground that you know goes directly back to the battery and attach your components to that. If your fuse block doesn't have a ground bus on it, then you end up using what's called a power distribution panel. So here's my fuse block on the Versus. It's a different model than the one I'm using. You can see my 12 volt relay here, sort of retained underneath some of the underwork here. Uh, here's the wire going to the battery terminal. Here's the ground. And then this is the power wire for the fuse block. And then I've got a negative that comes back here to the negative ground bus. This is the negative ground bus. You can see it's just a bar. It's got a bunch of screws on it and you attach the negative wires for your accessories to it. This here happens to be a good solid ground. I, was, I didn't take it directly back to the battery because I was able to test this and know that it's a good ground. So this grounds the entire bar and then all the other components ground to it. So that's what a negative ground bus looks like. I'll get all this stuff put back together, get all the covers back on, get the fuse block wired up and show you what we've got. Okay. I wanted this video to be a one-stop resource to complete this entire project, so I'm including here a diagram of the relay terminals and how to wire it up. 12-volt relays like this are virtually all standardized across the industry, so no matter which manufacturer you get yours from, it's likely to have the same terminals numbered the same way. If you need to make notes, take a picture or get a screenshot, pause the video now. We'll wait. Okay, terminal 86 connects to the power wire or positive wire of whatever circuit you're using to trigger the relay. In most cases, this should be either the license plate lamp or an accessory circuit the manufacturer has built into the bike. Terminal 85 is just a ground wire connected to any good ground. If you're executing this installation exactly how I'm showing it and you're not sure where to ground to, go ahead and use the ground bus on the fuse block. That'll work fine. Terminal 30 connects to the positive post of your battery. Terminal 87 connects to the device you want to power with the relay. In this case, it connects to the positive post on the auxiliary fuse block. Depending on what relay you're using, you may have a fifth terminal labeled 87A. Now, I don't want to go into a lot of detail here and potentially get confusing, so just know that for this project with these components, we don't employ the 87A terminal. Once you're finished, you got some free time, I encourage you to learn about what's called a normally closed relay and how you can use those in other applications. And that's it. A final note here, just a CMA. Electrical systems and applications can get very complicated and very exotic and there are a hundred different ways to use a relay like this to accomplish a hundred different things. The description I've given here should be considered exclusive to this installation and depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you may need to consult other sources. Hey, hope you're liking the video. Remember to click like, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell down in the corner so you'll know when new videos come out. And don't forget to check out the main site, www.totalmotorcycle.com. Okay, so we've got the bike all put back together. Just going to show you real quick what it looks like. Again, here's the cover that's hiding that relay and everything, and here's the rest of the cockpit shrouds and such. There's the battery door. You'll remember back behind there is the ground wire and the power wire. Uh, there's the wires inside there that connect to the accessory circuit like we talked about. 
And here is, I'm just going to scoop my handlebars over. Here's the fuse box and the glove box. So you can see here, this is the main power wire connecting it to the battery from the relay. This is the main ground wire. This is the positive wire for my cell phone charger up here, my cell phone mount and charger. And this is the ground wire for the cell phone mount and charger connected to the negative bus or the ground bus. So that's what all that looks like. It goes down in here and just sits and then it closes and it locks and it locks with the key. So now we'll show you. So this here, this mounts wired in, comes down through the triple tree up underneath and in through the side of the glove box there. So if I turn the key on, you can see, there we go. You can see my little charging icon there. Cell phone's getting power.